telling us that pressure is measured by a Barometer. A barometer. <laughs> and changes in the pressure can signal changes in the weather. Well, the wise guy, Matt Salen, is here. He's continuing our lesson in pressure, and he's got an enormous barometer. Morning, a little Mats. bit more interesting, too. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> Good morning, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to build an enormous barometer today. We're going to build one that's made out of water, and it's going to be about 33 feet high. And that's pretty interesting, but first we have to recap a little from what we did last week, which is we talked about atmospheric pressure, and you might remember I had Jennifer and Ann trying to pull apart this ball which had basically little air inside and lots of air on the outside and you couldn't pull it apart because the pressure of the atmosphere was pushing in on this thing so hard. Do you remember that? And at, and at the very end of last week I did this little trick and I'm going to do it again because it's, it's kind of fun and it's going to sort of lead into what I'm going to do. I'm just filling up a glass of water and if I just put a little tiny sheet of plastic over top of it I can just flip this thing upside down and the water doesn't leak out. This is because the pressure of the atmosphere is pushing up on this thing. The atmospheric pressure is about 15 pounds for every square inch. So you're pushing up on this thing with potentially a very large force and you can support a rather high column of water without the water leaking out. Okay, now, so the question is, why does water go up a straw when you suck on the straw? Okay, so if I take this little bit of hose and I put it in this colored water, mm, and I can suck on it and you see the blue stuff coming up. Now, it's not because there's any force in my mouth that's sucking the water up. What's really happening is me sucking means that the pressure in my mouth is a bit lower than the pressure everywhere else and the atmospheric pressure is actually pushing down on the water in the speaker and shoving it up through this hose. Okay, so that's a very important thing. It's not me doing this, it's the atmospheric pressure that's pushing it up. And that means that you can only get water up a pipe as high as the atmospheric pressure is able to push it. That means since the atmospheric pressure is 15 pounds per square inch, that means if I had a pipe that had a cer or an area of one square inch, it could only support 15 pounds of water, and it turns out that height of water is about 30-something feet. Okay, and so that's a lot of water. At the bottom of that column, then, you have 15 pounds per square inch of pressure, which is kind of a lot. So what I'm gonna do first here is just to demonstrate that the pressure at the bottom if a column of water is bigger than the pressure at the top, I have this big column of water right here. I'm going to pull out the top cork and the bottom cork and just watch the two streams. See how the stream near the top, the water is not shooting as far as the stream near the bottom. That's because the pressure at the bottom is higher and the pressure at the top is lower. Okay, this one is still shooting pretty far. This one isn't shooting far at all. The reason for that, like I said, is that at the bottom of a, of a column of water, you have a very high pressure. At the top, you have less pressure because there's less water on top of that thing. Okay, and so what we're gonna do in the next segment is basically this, except we're gonna do it really big. We're gonna get a hose, which is very long. It's gonna go all the way up the stairwell, which is behind me, and we're gonna get water to go up it as high as we can. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now this looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Matt's, mm. well, I guess he can't answer a question with his mouth full, can he? <laughs> no, he can't. Mm. Mm. Boy, that tastes terrible. Anyways, this is just blue colored water. Now, what I'm going to do in that segment, since I don't want to stand at the top sucking, it would take a long time, is I have a bucket already here. And I have a hose inside this bucket, which is 40 feet long. It's full of water. I'm going to run up the staircase with this thing. The top of this thing is closed, and we're going to see when we get to the top what happens to the water. Okay, and Matt's, uh, obviously water is, is, has an effect of barometric pressure. Why do we use mercury in our barometers? Well, it's so that we don't have to make the barometers 33 feet high, basically. Oh. Mercury is much denser, much, much denser than water is. And so, since it's so heavy, the atmospheric pressure can only support about 29 inches of a column of mercury. So that's why we use mercury instead of water, because we can build something that's sort of this big instead of something that's 33 feet high. But how high. cool would a 33-foot barometer <laughs> look in your living room, huh? Well, Matt Sellen, he's the wise guy. We'll be hearing more from him coming up in the next half hour of The Morning Show. Thanks, Matt. And if you've got question for your wise guy, email us at themorningshow at wcia.com. Just past 6.53.